Hey cats and kittens, Ed John Craven Bud here. It's about that time for the running news. Thanks for tuning in to the channel guys, it's very much appreciated. Help us out here at Ed Bud Running Shoe Reviews by hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell also for notifications of when we roll them out for you. And it really helps the channel if you give this video a thumbs up like. Danke schön. Let's get on with the news because that's why we're here. Who fancy some recycled alpha flies? Not me. A very interesting development in the running news this week. Nike seem to be dropping some recycled alpha flies in the not too distant future. You see the special recycled version of the alpha fly here. It appears as though the recycled element is that of chopped up Zoom X pieces, kind of compressed, I guess in an autoclave maybe, into the right shape, mimicking the normal style version which has like a coating of paint almost. It's like a thin layer around the foam itself. You can see big chunks of the Zoom X are actually missing there. I think if you've had a pair of the Tempo Next Percent, you'll see what this will look like. If you take out the insole, it's pretty much made of crushed up Zoom X pieces. Reminds me a little bit of Gibson and Fender where they do those relic models. I always remember going to Guitar Village in Farnham and seeing a whole wall of these relic Fender instruments. Or it looks like someone had taken a screwdriver to them or driven them around the car park a few times. It looks like you'll be able to pick up a pair of relic alpha flies rather than those awful pristine ones. I'm sure that people will be unable to resist the temptation for this. Certainly with that fly print upper as well. There are only a couple of versions of the original like prototype, I suppose, Next Percents released ages ago that had the fly print upper. Very clever marketing here from Nike if this is a very soon to be released item. It's just different enough that people might go for it just to try out the different upper material. I think those originals were released for elites only, so it'd be nice to feel what fly print's all about, but I'm not so sure about the crushed up Zoom X midsole. Just looking around, pairs of those original prototype or like pre next percent Vaporfly shoes, they're up for like £2,000. Who's going to pay £2,000 for that? I just hope that Zoom X stands the test of time and it doesn't just disintegrate after a few years. I guess we'll be finding out relatively soon. Is it worth the upgraded upper? Can it be lighter than the original version of the Alpha Fly? Do we need this additional version? I mean, there's countless colorways of the Alpha Fly sat waiting for people to buy them right now. Is this the Alpha Fly 2? Don't think it is. Although in fairness, the next percent 2 is very similar to the next percent. Send your Alpha Fly shoes to Edbird and I'll make this happen for a fraction of the price for you. I'll get the saw and the screwdriver out and do some customizations. Gouge out a bit of the foam for you. Absolute and utter. Let me know your thoughts on this strange new version of the Alpha Fly down in the comments. Story two. Adidas recently released a shoe with that 4D midsole material. It's in a range of different colorways, and there's also two models as well. They've apparently analyzed the foot strike of thousands of runners to get the best midsole shape and contour for easier runs. What that tells me is this shoe is gonna be pretty heavy. I'm not sure anybody's gonna be running in this 4D lattice sort of midsole style shoe. Apparently there are specifically tuned parts of the midsole for support and stability. Two versions of the 4D forward are available. One's called the Pulse and that seems to be like a cut down version of the shoe. It's got like a split style design midsole from what I can see, unless the 4D section is kind of coated in something. I wouldn't have thought that's the case. It appears that you've just got a 4D section in the midsole there leading through to the midfoot and then a more standard foam further on into the shoe. Though looking at the weights, I was right. 333 grams for a UK size eight and a half. Whoa. Heavy vibes, man. So it's probably gonna be close to 400 grams for my UK size 11 and a half. I think the upper here on the Pulse version is more reminiscent of the recent Ultra Boost and Solar Boost models. And then there's a more sock-like upper on the standard variant. I believe on the more expensive variant, it's Prime Knit Plus, which I think is the same material that was used on the Ultra Boost 21, although I could be wrong. It's interesting technology, I have to say, but I have to admit, I think it's more of a casual shoe. I just can't see too many runners testing this out. Untried sort of midsole. 4D's interesting technology. I can't help but think though, it's just gonna be too heavy for most. All the other 4D models have just been real clogs so far. I can sort of see where they're coming from, having that 
structure that kind of compresses and releases some energy, but I'm not sure that there's too much mileage in it. No pun intended. Almost makes the inclusion of that Prime Knit Plus upper to lower the weight of the shoe, just to make it a more workable daily offering, perhaps. Both models, though, are out now over at Adidas's online store. If you're interested, go and check them out. Story three. I was very saddened to hear the news of a lady passing away who did a huge amount for women's running. Hopefully I pronounced her name correctly, Dr. Joan Ulott. Uh, back in the 70s, she published a pivotal book of which helped to debunk many long-standing myths and falsehoods that surrounded women's running. Let's not forget some of the ridiculous rules that have been in place even, you know, 40 years ago. They prevented women running anything above the 1500 metres at Olympic level. Can you believe that? Bonkers rules clearly set down by someone living in a world of complete nonsense. Joan became highly educated over the course of her life in terms of exercise physiology and set out to inform women that there was no danger of them damaging their reproductive organs or that their bodies might become less appealing because they would run. Just reading back these words, it almost seems absurd. This type of misinformation had been spread around and people thought that. Even heading into the 80s, the Olympic Committee still put their foot down, continued to hold on to those old ideals. They neglected to add any other further distance events. Finally, the marathon, though, was added in 1984, which was a step in the right direction. And sense had started to prevail at last. An inspiring lady, by all accounts, who met many barriers within her life due to bizarre gender-based stereotypes. She'd run marathon after marathon throughout her life. I think her best was two hours, 47 minutes. Hopefully I can get there someday. I've still got a few years left as well. I think she was 48 when she hit that time. So this, this hope for Ed Bud, yeah. What an inspirational lady. She should be remembered. Story four. I think you'll all agree with me that we saw some inspirational running from the main man, Jakob Ingebrigtsen, at the Olympics. Superb effort in the 1,500 meters. Power, pace, how does he do it? His coach, who happens to also be his father, did reveal some interesting information about Ingebrigtsen. That nitro Norwegian has been operating at a kind of pro level of running since a very young age. I think he was running a huge amount when he was about 10 years old. I think when he was 16, the champion chap was running about 130 kilometers a week. So that's about 80 miles, 30 more than I run a week. Mind you, he's a lot younger than me. He probably doesn't eat anywhere near as much pizza either. And it appears they put very careful controls on the amount of energy used during some of the more testing sessions. Any level of high intensity was very carefully measured. His dad did mention that he thought that was double the distance that some European athletes would be doing at that age. So is that the kind of magic formula, this really careful balance? I think there's a lot of testing involved when he was doing those higher intensity sessions, very carefully implemented workout plans. Obviously lots of determination there as well to get out running, you know, twice a day for so many years, but he's reaping the benefits of it now. It looks unstoppable. Obviously sacrifices have to be made, don't they? But we don't all have the time to be able to do that. Sometimes it's hard enough just to get out once in a day to run let alone run every day. But I think increasing the mileage up very slowly and that distance each week certainly does help. It's really helped me over the last year or so. But it's also knowing when to scale back the intensity of those efforts. For example, hard track session yesterday and this morning a very easy three miles just to loosen everything up a little bit. And it all feels pretty good. That's a skill that's really hard to learn though, isn't it? As to when to go back down through the gears and just canter along. Can Inga Britson get even faster? Only time will tell. I certainly wouldn't bet against it, that's for sure. Okay, that's all the running news for this week. Musical interlude for you. If Beast ever stops scratching and making noise. Wait, shh. Today comes from Dick Dale the king of the surf guitar. I did pick up a pair of the Hoka Rincon 3 recently and it's made me think about surf again, surf music. I think also I've been listening a lot to Krungbin as well, who sound very surfy, it's just in my mind. My two favourite tracks by Dick Dale are Surf Beat and Have a Nagila. Have a Nagila, in fact, is wonderful. It's almost this overload of spring reverb. It creates this foggy mesh all over the track, driving bass and drums. And Surf Beat, if you can't get excited by that track, with the Tom Drum introduction then. There's no hope for you, no hope. Band practice tonight, in fact, I'm really looking forward to that. Gonna crank the reverb up and drown everybody out with some jazz master grungy mess. And they'll all enjoy it, I'm sure. Wind your windows down, get out down near the beach somewhere and drive along 
listening to some Dick Dale will make you feel good. All right, cats, I've got to get my editing hat on. Oh, it's already on. Thanks for tuning in and sticking with me to the very end of the video, guys. It's always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when we launch those new videos for you. And it really does help the channel out a huge amount if you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you. trusty old friend. Seen a lot of times together, Beastie.